Greetings, my beautiful people, mini movies here. Today I will recap a 2021 movie title, Eternals, spoiler ahead, enjoy. In the beginning, the Celestials created the sun and other forms of life, but monstrous creatures known as Deviants began to run rampant. The leader of the Celestials, Erisham, brought forth an immortal group of superhumans known as the Eternals from the planet Olympia and sent them on their ship, the Domo, to Earth. The Eternals awaken, with Erisham choosing a jack to lead them. Icarus meets Circe as she sees Earth for the first time and says it's beautiful. They are joined by Thena, Kingo, Fastos, Droog, Sprite, Makari, and Gilgamesh. The Eternals arrive in Mesopotamia in the year 5000 BC. Deviants attack the humans on the land before the Eternals start to fight. Thena wields her spear, Kingo fires energy blasts from his hands, Makari uses her super speed to attack, and Sprite casts illusions. Droog also manipulates the minds of the inhabitants to try and fight. After fending off the Deviants, the Eternals introduce themselves to the humans. Jump to London in the present day where Cersei now lives. She goes to class, where she is supposed to be giving a lesson, and she finds her boyfriend, Dane Whitman, filling in for her until she arrives. The lecture is interrupted by a large earthquake. Cersei has her students go for cover and uses her power to stop a large object falling off the wall from hurting a student. Cersei later celebrates Dane's birthday with Sprite and a few others. She gives Dane a ring from his family's history that she has kept for centuries. While walking on the streets, the three are found by a humongous deviant named Crow. Sprite casts an illusion to hide them from it, but the deviant is able to spot them and goes after them, even though deviants generally attack humans and not Eternals. Cersei and Sprite ready themselves for a fight before Icarus flies in and fires his laser eyes at the beast. Cersei uses her power to turn a runaway bus into rose petals. The Eternals see that Crow is also able to heal itself before it escapes. Cersei comes clean to Dane about her life as an Eternal and what their purpose has been. He asks her why they never helped during the Great Wars or when Thanos attacked, and she explains that they were instructed to never interfere in the orders of mankind so as to not hinder their development as a society. Cersei also tells Dane that she and Icarus were technically together for centuries, but things didn't work out. She later goes back to her apartment to reconvene with Sprite and Icarus, resolving that they need to get a Jack and the other Eternals together to fight Crow. Flashback to 575 BC in Babylon, after an intense battle with some deviants, a Jack forms a link to speak with Erisham. She expresses respect for his grand plan, but appears to have a slight objection as it pertains to the people of Earth. Erisham tells her not to get attached to them and to follow through with the plan. Ajak goes back to the lair, where Fastos is developing a steam engine to provide for mankind. The Eternals live among society openly, with Sprite using her powers to entertain children with stories that come to life through her illusions. Meanwhile, Icarus's feelings for Cersei have been growing over time. He admits his love to her, which she reciprocates. They make love outside at night and are seen, married later during the age of the Gupta Empire with all of the other Eternals there for them. Back in the present, Cersei, Sprite, and Icarus travel to South Dakota to a Jack's ranch, only to find her dead outside her home, killed by Crow. The three mourn their fallen leader, but when Cersei approaches her body, the stone in a Jack's body that was bestowed to her by the Celestials attaches itself to Cersei, meaning a Jack has chosen her as her successor. Cersei briefly catches a glimpse of Erisham before she loses sight of him. Flashback, 1521 AD, Tenochtitlan, in the midst of a fierce battle, Thena finds herself overcome by Maud Wirai, a result of her past memories collapsing in on themselves and driving her insane. She attacks her comrades and nearly kills them before they subdue her. Thena awakens with little memory of the incident. Although Ajak proposes that they go to the Domo and uses the available resources to help Thena, Makari argues that she wouldn't really even be Thena after the procedure due to it potentially erasing aspects of her as they already love her. Droop questions Ajak's leadership as he has long been angry that he cannot use his power to help mankind stop their battles, but knows he cannot intervene. Ajak decides that, since the deviants have been driven out and staying together would be dangerous, they should all split up and live in the world among the mortals. Gilgamesh agrees to look after Thena and make sure she doesn't hurt herself or anybody else. Present, Mumbai, Cersei, Sprite, and Icarus travel to find Kingo, now a famed Bollywood superstar who has pretended to be his own descendant for the last few decades to maintain an acting legacy. His valet Karen knows his secret and has been working with him for over 50 years. The three break the news of Ajax's death to him and the threat of the deviants. 
Karen encourages Kingo to join his friends on their mission to round up the others, and Karen is even more than willing to join them. They travel in his private jet to Australia, where Sprite expresses annoyance at Kingo for abandoning her a while back for his new famous lifestyle. In Australia, the team locates Thena and Gilgamesh in their private location. Thena almost has another lapse, where she tries to attack her family, but Gil is able to talk her down with help from Sprite. He cooks them dinner before they take the time to mourn a jack. Later, Cersei tells Gilgamesh about her new burden as leader and how she cannot figure out how to link herself to speak with Erisham. After relaxing herself, she is able to speak to the great celestial leader. He tells her that the emergence is happening, and he explains the true purpose of the Eternals, they were sent to bring forth the birth of the Celestial Tiamat, as new Celestials come about every few millennia and they have done this process on other planets before Earth. They come about through intelligent life, which had been halted by the attack of the Deviants, but with the Eternals, having gotten rid of them, Erisham says it is now time to wipe out all life on Earth to make way for Tiamat. Cersei is horrified by the revelation, but Erisham defends it by saying this is just a cycle of creation for their life forms. He then explains that Olympia never existed and that she and the other Eternals are just creations from the World Forge as artificial beings made for use by the Celestials. Cersei cannot remember this because the Eternals have their memories reset after each emergence. To top it all off, Erisham created the Deviants to regulate the balance between predators and prey so intelligent life may prosper, but he lost control of the Deviants and they became predators themselves. He made it so that Eternals could not evolve to correct his mistake. Cersei breaks the revelation to the others. They are stunned by the knowledge of their true purpose, but most of them resolve to find a way to save the people of Earth. They figure they must find Droog and see if he may use his power to overtake the mind of Tiamat. The Eternals travel to the Amazon, where Droog is staying in a village where he has been keeping watch over the people for decades. He is not so keen to help the others in their mission, as he has grown cynical and weary over the knowledge of what they were meant to do. At night, Kingo talks to Sprite and states that he knows that she is in love with Icarus but has not been able to act on it due to her childlike appearance. Soon, Crow and other deviants attack the village. The Eternals fight them, but Crow overpowers Gilgamesh and absorbs his energy, gaining the ability to walk on two legs and speak English. After he leaves, Thena stays by Gilgamesh's side as he dies. The other Eternals mourn him. Droog agrees to join the team in honor of Gil and knows they need to find Fastos now. Flashback, 1945, Hiroshima, just after the dropping of the atomic bomb, Fastos stands among the aftermath of the bombing. He weeps to a jack, feeling remorse for helping humans develop and advance in technology, only to continue killing each other. It is here where he loses faith in humanity. Present, Chicago, Fastos lives with his husband Ben and their son Jack, and the Eternals find him at their home. Jack recognizes Icarus from TV from his fight with Crow that was featured on the news. Fastos is not willing to abandon his family for the sake of a dangerous mission, but Ben tells him to go through with it if it means that there will be a future for them and Jack together. The Eternals travel to Iraq, where they uncover the Domo, as well as Makari having lived among the locals. Fastos comes up with the idea of linking everyone's powers together through the Unimind, which will allow them to transfer their powers so that Droog may mind control Tiamat. When Kingo tells Icarus that he would follow him to the end, Icarus tells him, that he is not who Kingo thinks he is. Six days earlier, we see a Jack having gone to visit Icarus to tell him about the emergence and how the Avengers has brought everyone back to Earth after Thanos erased them brought about the energy needed for the Deviants to come back. She has since begun to doubt their purpose and thinks they shouldn't go through with the mission because of how close they have become with the people of Earth. Icarus brings a Jack to a location near an icy lake where he has located Deviants. Because he refuses to abandon the mission, he throws a jack to the Deviants, where Crow goes on to absorb her energy and gain her power. Icarus flies her body to her house, where he will later find her with Cersei and Sprite. Fastos sends Makari to locate the source of the emergence, which turns out to be an active volcano in the Indian Ocean. Icarus goes to stop their plan, as he soon reveals that a jack told him about the emergence after they left Babylon. They realize that he killed her and is planning to go through with the emergence at whatever the cost. Sprite joins him due to her love for him. Kingo ends up leaving the team with Karen for fear that he will end up getting him killed if they have to go against Erisham. Although Cersei expresses her doubts, Tina assures her that she was chosen by a jack to succeed her for a reason. Fastos then offers to reprogram the stone in Cersei from linking to Erisham to linking to all of them to form the Unimind. 
The Eternals gather by the volcano and begin to battle Icarus. He seemingly kills Droog and fights the others just before Crow arrives to attack. Tina fights Crow, where he taunts her and nearly absorbs her life force until she slices him to pieces. Sprite attempts to take down Cersei, but Droog emerges and knocks Sprite out. After they subdue Icarus, the Unimind is activated, and Cersei takes on the combined powers of the other Eternals as Tiamat begins to emerge from the volcano. With her powers, Cersei freezes Tiamat and causes it to remain as some kind of statue. Icarus frees himself, but he feels great remorse for his actions and chooses to fly himself directly into the sun. In the aftermath, Cersei understands Sprite's frustration with her life, so she uses the Unimind to take away Sprite's immortality so that she may live a normal human life. The Eternals split up once again, with Thena joining Makari and Droog on the Domo as they go look for other Eternals, while Fastos returns to his family, Sprite lives as a human, and Kingo returns to his work, but they all maintain a firm love for one another. Cersei rejoins Dane, who tells her that his family history is more complicated than he realized. Suddenly, Erisham appears in the sky and summons Cersei, Kingo, and Fastos. He tells them that he knows that they failed his plan for the emergence, but chooses to spare them for now, and then disappears. Mid-credits, Tina, Makari, and Droog are struggling to find other Eternals, as well as their own friends who have vanished. They are then found by a troll named Pip and his employer, Eros Starfox, brother of Thanos and fellow Eternal, who promises to help the other three in their mission. Post-credits, Dane is in his family home staring at the ebony blade, seeming hesitant to grab hold of it. Before he can make up his mind, an off-screen voice, Blade, asks Dane if he really feels he is ready. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy the recap, subscribe if you are new here, and check out our channel for more awesome video.